So I'm re-releasing this video because the YouTube gods decided to age restrict the previous version and say they were doing so due to graphic violence. Now, considering I edited all of the violence out of the video, specifically said I was doing that, that's ridiculous and absurd. Now, if it was demonetized, I would just leave it alone. But the thing is, it's age restricted, which means almost nobody was going to see it going forward. So yeah, if you've seen it before, you know, maybe give me a like or something, maybe watch it again. I, I don't know. But if you haven't seen it, please enjoy the video because the other one's completely suppressed. Welcome, welcome everyone, my name is Sean, and today we're going to talk about this viral video that people are going absolutely crazy about on Twitter.com, or X if you want to call it that, and the reasons why I want to talk about this is because there's actually an underlying policy issue that is not being addressed, and unfortunately, even though this viral video of a brutal high school fight needs no exaggeration, you have a bunch of people on Twitter in particular that are going out of their way to make things up, cut this already ridiculous and inexcusable video down from a minute to about 20 seconds in order to try to make it worse when it's completely unnecessary for them to do so. And of course, I'm going to bring you the real information about this, the undergirding policy at the Hazelwood School District that will explain how violence has been so normalized in that particular district. But before we do, I want to thank everybody who signed up over on actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Oh, give me the money. Give you, give me the money. Okay. And remind you that on Saturday, April 27th, I will be in Austin, Texas at the Vulcan Gas Company for MindsFest. Link in the description for tickets if you're interested in attending. Stone Fox, a young woman is in the hospital suffering from critical injuries received yesterday in a fight near our North County High School. Now, police say they responded to the site of the brawl involving students from Hazelwood East High School and other schools yesterday. So like I said in the open, there is a viral video. It takes place near the East Hazelwood High School in the state of Missouri. It features students from said high school, but according to news reports, there are students from neighboring schools that are also involved, and it starts off as a one-on-one -on -one fight. <laughs> or it at least appears to start off that way, between a black girl and a white girl. However, while this does start off as a regular ordinary fight, it quickly devolves because the black girl, at one point in time, when she gets the upper hand, decides that it's appropriate to smash the head of the white girl into the concrete of the sidewalk, which ends up leading to her convulsing, and according to many reports, police remain tight-lipped about the current condition of the woman and what may have led up to the fight. She is in the hospital with critical injuries. Now, it is also important to understand that when you watch this full video, again, linked in the description of this video, I can't show you this much violence, especially involving young people on YouTube.com. That is not something they're going to let me fly with. That the other kids that are surrounding this also got into a large brawl. Now, of course, this went viral for multiple different reasons. First and foremost, black girl attacking white girl and beating her so viciously, never in the history of ever, will get the national media coverage that it deserves. Again, we live in a nation where white people arguing with black people, even when they're in the right, becomes national viral news, like the Christian Cooper, Amy Cooper story. However, this vicious, violent, over-attacking of this girl, totally fine, totally okay, something that should be confined to local news and to the internet.com. Now, we need to be clear. The fight itself did not take place at the school. We have seen video of that fight, but we're not going to be showing it on our air. Now, look, just because the mainstream media is not going to cover this for obvious reasons, because they don't want to portray black people as committing the crimes that they're actually committing, doesn't necessarily mean that the online media is going to be any better. I saw this story devolve, get exaggerated, have the clips cut down even shorter to misinform people in the audience all over social media, and it's absolutely embarrassing to see this happen over and over again. Again. So one of the things that you need to understand about this story is the fact that the white girl and the black girl were initially engaged in a fight. You can see them squaring up in order to fight one on one. So this was initially mutual combat. Now I've covered on this channel repeatedly the knockout game where mostly black youths will unprovoked attack white people and Asian people and basically anyone who's not black elderly doesn't matter for fun and attempt to knock them out in an unprovoked way. 
way. It is important for people to understand that these videos are being cut short to not show you that this is how it started, even though, again, even if you don't pay for Twitter Blue or the verification check mark or whatever, you can still show the full one minute video. And it did start as a mutual fight. That being said, when you're doing a regular fist fight, that does not mean you have the right to smash somebody against the concrete, potentially killing that person. And obviously, it is unjustified, but we have to talk about the reality of the situation and not just make up a narrative. On top of that, there's another reason why people are cutting this out of context. Because during the course of the fight, when the black girl gets the upper hand, a black girl comes in in order to assist the white girl, and she starts attacking her. She is actually fought off and intervened with by a fat white girl that is on the side of the black girl that smashed the girl into the concrete. Now again, you can deny this, you can say that the still images that I'm showing you in this video aren't real, but again, if you look in the description box of this video under where it says sources, you can watch the full thing for yourself and verify that I'm 100% telling you the truth. And the reason why I find this to be particularly disgusting is because again, there's no need to exaggerate this situation or try to make it any worse when you see that girl smashed into the concrete in such a brutal way and you think to yourself oh I need to cut this in a way to make it look even more horrific there's something wrong with you because it's horrific enough on its own and by the way they're doing this to gin up racial hysteria stir up racial animus when it doesn't need to be injected any further into this situation and it's completely unnecessary it's essentially the internet's equivalent or twitter's equivalent to what they did in the Daniel Penny case the guy who, along with two other people, restrained the crazed homeless man Jordan Neely, who was threatening people on the train, yet instead of showing you the full video or the full image, the panned out image of the three people that were restraining this person, the media decided to punch in only to show you the white person with his arm around the neck of the black person, not showing you that there were other people who were minorities who were assisting Penny because everybody on the train understood that Neely was in fact a threat and it made sense for Daniel Penny to restrain that person. You got to be aware of the media manipulation as it's being engaged in and by the way this time it's being engaged in by people on Twitter that are trying to go more viral by making the story worse and speaking of making the story worse if you saw this on Twitter you might actually think that the victim in this particular instance passed away. She's dead. She died. Because that's what's repeatedly being reported by major accounts that don't fact check, that don't verify information, despite the fact that local news reports time and time again say that she's in the hospital, say that she's in critical condition. Although, I gotta be perfectly honest with you, the bulk of the reporting say that the police are not releasing the status of the victim's condition. Police remain tight-lipped about the current condition of the woman and what may have led up to the fight. So we don't even know Know for sure if she's in critical, if she had traumatic brain injury as reported, or if she's on the cusp of passing away or anything like that. But when you think about how this information is being presented to you, when again, the full viral video is available for everybody out there in the public to verify for themselves, you have to start to question the motivation behind it. Why are you showing me, instead of this full fight, which again is around a minute long, just the part where her head's getting smashed into the ground where it looks like this black girl is attacking this white girl and we don't have any context for it and why are you telling me that she died from this rather than giving me the full picture and by the way in the head smashing portion of it you see a lot of black people surrounding this white girl it gives the impression that all of these black people are participating in the attack when in reality the scene is much more chaotic you have a whole brawl of mostly black kids fighting each other you did have one friend of the white girl try to defend her and she was fought off by two girls one white and one black and that prevented them from being able to help this girl and that led to her being smashed into the ground i think that those two friends the fat white girl and the other black girl that fought off the obese black girl should be charged as accessories to this serious violent assault and if unfortunately this young lady does pass away from this i think they should be charged as accessories to murder now that's my take based on the full context of of the video however people are posting it not the full context they're cutting it down they're giving out false information that's completely unverified 
up sourced by random Instagram accounts from uncredible news sources that, by the way, ended up deleting the post when they got called out. And this is leading to hysteria because their intention is to generate hatred on the internet for clicks and engagement and those sweet, sweet Twitter bucks. And this bothers me for two reasons. Number one, it actually goes completely against my philosophy on why I discuss black crime on this channel. And two, there actually is a deeper policy implication that none of these lazy people who are just trying to farm engagement actually looked into that I will present to you after I explain the philosophy on why it's important to talk about black crime. So right now in current American society, we live in a nation that is gripped by a movement called Black Lives Matter. And by the way, there have been different various elements of this throughout our history that seek to portray black people as the victims in a bunch of different categories. However, one one of those categories happens to be of unjust police violence, and they talk about disproportionality compared to their population of interactions with the police department, and that leads to disproportionately them getting killed by the police. And the fact of the matter is, the only way to address this absolute lie, which by the way has devastating impacts on our nation and on our criminal justice system, is to point out that black people do not interact disproportionately to the police based on their level of crime crime, which is the only thing that makes sense to measure their level of interaction with the police against. Why would we go based on population if the behavior of different populations is completely different? Secondly, the reason why it's important to talk about many instances of black on white crime is that we live in a society that is so starved for black people being victimized by white people, being victimized by evil white racists, that again, as I said earlier, they will churn arguments that white people have against black people into viral news stories, even if the facts of that story are the black person being in the wrong. Christian Cooper, great example of this. This guy was threatening to steal a woman's dog because she refused to obey his orders in Central Park to leash her dog. So she freaked out like many dog moms would, yet her life was completely ruined. And Christian Cooper, who was the bad guy who had a history of antagonizing people in Central Park over this this particular issue, who was the Karen, by the way, ended up getting a show on National Geographic. We also talked about this so-called bike Karen repeatedly on this channel. The media tried to convince you that a pregnant woman aged 36 years old who was getting off her shift as a nurse or medical assistant or physician's assistant, I forget exactly which, walked up to five 17-year-old black kids and attempted to rob them for a city bike. And of course, the facts of the case show that they in fact were intimidating and robbing her. They were trying trying to hold down the bikes in violation of the city bike rules. And of course, they were insanely disrespectful to a pregnant woman during the process. Yet outlet after outlet tried to tell you that that woman was the bad person, that she was an evil white racist with absolutely no evidence because of the very common instance of a white woman going up and robbing five 17 year old black teenagers. I mean, we also had the mentally disabled woman who was in Victoria's Secret, who was antagonized repeatedly by a race hustling black woman. That became a viral video. And this woman who again, lived in a group home for disabled people was harassed endlessly, even though she did nothing wrong. And this lie, this great lie goes on and on and on in our culture. So I think it's absolutely crucial for us to point out when we're looking at arguments, we're again, Again, the white person isn't even necessarily in the wrong, and those are going viral and becoming national news stories, that in terms of violent instances of crime, black people are 10 to 17 times, depending on which crime we're talking about, and yes, this includes murder, to victimize white people than the other way around. So yeah, that's another reason why it's important to talk about black on white crime, because our culture is so desperate for black victimization that they will amplify white on black arguments, which again, are oftentimes, more often than not, an issue where the black person initiates the argument or is completely wrong in said argument. Now, if you'll notice in the reasons why I said it's important to highlight black criminality, I never once said ginning up hysteria and hatred against black people. I never once said we got to give a false perception to people out there in the audience of the danger of these criminals, because just like this particular case being brutal enough on its own, the facts of black crime are brutal enough on their own and they should not need any exaggeration. 
On top of that, black people are often the victims of black crime, so you're actually highlighting this in order to aid them to some degree because we have a culture that is in denial about that, and the people who are getting murdered at extraordinarily high rates are disproportionately also black men or black people as a whole. But these people who are lying about this particular case, who do this all the time, who play 10-year-old videos from different countries and portray them as something that happens happened yesterday in the United States of America, they don't give a damn about any of that. They're just trying to go viral because the only people they care about are themselves and their own pocketbook. And I'm sick of this nonsense. I'm sick of this low effort, low tier, low grade content going viral on the internet.com, especially when if they cared, if they were actually interested, they would look into the high school in question and find out that there are crucial policy failures, including equity training for the school that likely prevented the discipline of all of these violent kids, because believe me, they're not going to turn out to be first offenses based on the fact that they didn't want to disproportionately punish black people in those particular schools. In fact, the Hazelwood School District Board of Education was selected to receive the 2022 North County Incorporated Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Leadership Award. The board spent many hours to provide strong governance and support to the district and community in the areas of diversity, equity, and inclusion, according to the superintendent. Now, this page goes on to list a bunch of different ways that this particular school district was pushing diversity, equity, inclusion. However, one of the key things that, that they instituted in this particular school is something that I've highlighted repeatedly over the years, which of course is a racial equity discipline policy, which of course is based on the idea that black students must be treated completely unfairly in the public school systems because their suspension rates are are higher than white counterparts. And by the way, this is something that is enforced from the top, from the Federal Department of Education. It started under the Obama administration where they started examining the outcomes, not examining the behavior, of different racial groups in terms of suspensions, and they decided to declare that if you were disproportionately suspending black kids more, your school was guilty of evil white racism, and although it was suspended under the Trump administration, it came back into place under the Biden administration, even though, again, the hypothesis makes no sense on its face. If black people commit more violent crime than any other group in this country, way more than white people, more murders and all that, and the peak offending years for males of all racial groups is age 14 to 25, wouldn't it stand to reason that black kids who are committing more crime outside of school would be committing more violations and more crimes inside of school? Well, when you look at the accountability section of this particular school district, obviously they reject that idea. And by the way, if you think this doesn't come from the federal government, just look at the footnote under the accountability section and you'll see it comes from the Federal Department of Education. In fact, this is a policy made to be in compliance with the rules coming from the Federal Department of Education. So in the accountability section, it says all staff, students, and board members members are expected to meet the intentions of the spirit of and uphold this policy in addition to each individual who has knowledge of violations of this policy is responsible for reporting such violations to the appropriate identified staff member or department as identified by this policy. The school district will vigorously implement and actively enforce this policy and remain accountable for implementing this policy. Therefore, willful, severe, or persistent acts or practices that violate the intention of this policy, practices that perpetuate the opportunity gap, practices of institutional racism, actions that reflect bias, actions of microaggressions, actions of oppression, or actions of structural racism as defined in this policy will result in the following. Now, I will link this full source document in the description under this video, but the most important one that I want to highlight right here is the suspension policy that they're implementing because this is the key because like in criminality getting rid of violent offenders early stopping them before they get to the point where they're smashing the heads 
of students into the pavement nearly killing them is absolutely crucial. However, they're interested in going soft on these criminals in the schools, not referring them to prosecution, not stopping them before they commit these more serious crimes, and that is reflected in the absolute unruly nature that we see in the viral video. Number six, the district will promote restorative justice practices across our organization, but in particular to expand the ongoing efforts to identify and address address the racial disparities and disproportionalities in school suspensions, expulsions, and academic outcomes. Now, every time I see one of these policies instituted in a school, they're done in the exact same way. You go softer, you get slaps on the wrist, you get breaks to black students because you don't want to have numbers that show black students are disproportionately being suspended even though their behavior is disproportionately violent. And I want you to think about the fact that this was a goal that the school was so good at achieving they actually received an award for it in this particular district and then think about the viral video. Ask yourself if any of these kids who are just brawling not too far from their school after school maybe had violent instances before, maybe had suspendable instances before, but of course they didn't go through with the consequences of that because they were committed to this racial equity agenda. They were committed to having the numbers look good on the back end, that they didn't talk about the fact that the inputs were completely different. In fact, they actively ignored that. I want you to think about Head Smash Girl and think about if this is somebody who had any signs of previous offenses in her history that we would likely find out about later that this school district actively ignored in order to win that diversity equity and inclusion award make no mistake about it when these policies are implemented suspensions for black students consequences for black students end up plummeting dramatically and you know what goes up each and every time i've seen it repeatedly violent instances in the school problems in the school because what happens when you can't have consequences for bad actions is those bad actions are encouraged further so yeah to be clear while this story on its surface might seem like a one-off instance in reality in actuality there were likely signs that were ignored and ignored deliberately so because of this school district in particular the high school where most of these students come from deliberately went out of their way to ignore or signs of violence in order to get equity standards in order to get a damn equity award and that has serious consequences and a girl may die may suffer from traumatic brain injury is definitely at least in the hospital right now because of it. Now look, all of this information is readily available. They brag about it on the website of the school district. The documents are public. Again, they're linked in the description if you want to check them out. Anybody who actually purports to be a journalist could have found this and reported it to you on the internet.com. But the thing is, there's no incentive for this work. It would actually be better for me to cut out the overwhelming majority of information in this video and just focus on the 10 to 15 seconds that make it look like there was no fight that preceded this and it was just a black girl racistly attacking a white girl also lie and say she's dead already because who cares about facts at this day and age when you can go viral and get that sweet Twitter engagement. Unfortunately for a huge portion of the population and unfortunately it's on both sides of the aisle, more information is actually worse. Being dumber is actually better and leads to broader appeal and more success. But I'm hoping that you guys out there in the audience appreciate the work that I put into this particular video, looking into the school district, looking into the policies that may have had an impact in this district, because I'm certain that as people look into this, we will find out that disciplinary problems went up dramatically since the implementation of this curriculum in 2021, which of course coincides with the Biden administration reinstituting these Obama era policies. Policies. But hey, those are just my thoughts, my hopes, my opinions. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you liked this video, then show them by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on my social medias, support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about a viral head smashing incident. Till next time.